First Sergeant Kep here with Company D, 2nd United States Sharpshooters, at a rather hot event here in Snoqualmie, Washington. And uh, thanks to a great comment uh, we got on, a, on another video, we thought we'd take some time and let you see inside of our haversacks. Uh, there's a lot of talk on the uh, campaigner forums about exactly what should be in the haversack, how it should be made, all the period items. There are plenty of uh, great manuals that will list exactly what you should have in your haversack, and we'll have some of those listed in the description below. But below, below me here, you'll have uh, an assortment of the different haversacks in different states and different quality makers. <clears throat> I'll start with mine. And one of the first things you'll see, and it's common with all of our gear, is we have it properly labeled. And this is in another video. If you want to see how to uh, defarb your canteen, be sure to click up here to catch the video. And on our haversacks, you are also supposed to have them labeled. Uh, we have our regiment, our company, and our line number, so that way we can, we can identify our equipment easily. Especially if we have to drop it or we're piling it up like we are today. <clears throat> uh, for fonts, uh, we just use store-bought paint, but for fonts, uh, a good place to get uh, period correct fonts is Blazing Star Press, and we'll have uh, their website in the description. So I have my uh, haversack set up today to be fairly period correct. Uh, I also have uh, my own personal information from a private purchase label on the inside flap of my haversack. Um, <clears throat> cookware, I have a canteen half. I really like uh, using these. Uh, even if you don't cook over an open fire, if you want to improve your impression, just stick it on the barbecue for a while and try to get a nice patina on it. Um, cutlery, three prong fork, knives, big spoon, and then I, there's sort of a heated um, reenactor debate about where to keep your mug. Uh, I keep mine in my bag and uh, I have a nice copper one because I'm a sergeant and I can afford some nicer things. <clears throat> also as first sergeant, I'm always taking notes, copying down orders of the day I get from first sergeant's call, so I usually have my notebook in my haversack. A lot of people say, oh, anything that's not food related should never be in your haversack. Well, it's hard to believe out of the millions of soldiers that served during the Civil War that at any given time they would never have a single personal item in their haversack. Um, it definitely wasn't a junk drawer. It would primarily have their food, but it's reasonable to expect some period correct personal items that they would have handy. Um, I'm a big coffee drinker like all the rest of our soldiers during the war. And so I have my rations. Uh, NCOs would be issued a uh, ration and a half. So we'd get a little more goodies than regular soldiers. Uh, these are coffee beans. You wouldn't have ground coffee. These ones are already roasted. Uh, James Townsend and Son did a great video on how to period, uh, in a very period, period correct manner, uh, roast green beans and prepare them and cook them on a campfire. So we'll have a link to that video in the description as well. I also have a wrap of hardtack, so that can go with my coffee in the morning. And then, what else is in here? All these little poke sacks you can make easily at home. Uh, I have rice. Rice is actually, I think, underrepresented in the hobby. Most people think of cornmeal and flour and stuff like that. But soldiers grew so tired of rice, there are quite a few uh, diary and journal entries where they swore off rice and never ate it the rest of their life. They had to eat so much of it. <clears throat> the other item I have is cornmeal, and I actually like having cornmeal in, oh, those are beans. Yeah, this is my cornmeal sack. Because if you cook your uh, meat ration, and you eat your meat, and you put your cornmeal into your fat, and roll it around, you get this nice sort of fat, delicious cornmeal-y treat. Probably not the best of health, but if you're out running around, it's good for you. And then beans probably the number one soldier food. Uh, dried beans that you would have to soak, take a lot of preparation in order to have them digestible. But those are my my rations. I don't, when I do living history, I don't carry the meat in my haversack because personally I think it's gross and it could go rancid. And we've seen plenty of soldiers get food poisoning at events. If you are committed to carrying salt pork, there are good ways to carry it and keep it cool so you don't get sick. 
And I just keep some extra twine because it always comes in handy. So that's my bag. And we have another example of a haversack. This is sort of your mainstream sutler sack. So if you want to save money, you can get a nice mainstream sack and then label it and bump your authenticity on the cheap. This one is a really nice high-end uh, NJ Cicala uh, haversack. Costs considerably more, usually about $100. The quality is fantastic. The, the painting of the canvas is wonderful. Again, it's properly labeled. And so now we're gonna start getting into some of our actual soldier bags. So what do we actually carry at events? And beware, there is farb in some of these. Uh, for example, my number one farb is the camera we're using right now to film this video. Uh, extra food, it just happens to be modern. Uh, snacks. Matches, you always need to have matches. Uh, dried fruit. And this is Private Hardways. So she always has tea in her haversack. So modern food in a high-end bag but she's still staying true to the principle of the haversack. And we always wear these when we march around and we're in combat. This is a <clears throat> another uh, mainstream uh, haversack with a cup on the outside. I personally think, depending on what you're doing, having the cup on the outside makes a lot of sense because it's handy. Um, if you're doing a lot of marching, it's not gonna really matter, matter much how, how tight you can turn in a battle formation. So we have a nice mug, could have been used on the stove. You don't want to have a shiny mug, that just ruins your impression. <clears throat> so in here, we have a plate, a spoon, uh, gloves. Actually, I should have a pair of gloves in my uh, bag because if you actually cook over a fire, all of your tinware is going to get really hot and you'll really appreciate a good leather glove. We have a nice tin glass case, well-fitting one. So we can keep our period glasses nice and safe because they do cost a little bit of money. And modern glasses because sometimes your field of vision is a little wonky with period correct glasses. So when the public's gone, it's really nice to put on your modern eyewear. And then all sorts of you know necessary medications that the soldier might need to stay happy and healthy. Uh, so you want to keep all of that stuff close to you. Uh, another one. Uh, well used, you don't always have to have spotless gear. Remember, soldiers served anywhere from 90 days to the entire duration of the war, so their gear is gonna be a little beat up. Um, this one, really important stuff, Ep EpiPen and inhaler, and the always appreciated uh, lip balms. Uh, when you're out in the sun all day, these things are really nice. No, they're not period correct, but they are really nice to have. Uh, we have another haversack, a little well used. We have a shiny clean canteen half, we got a cook in that. Uh, we have a strap, uh, various bags, what is this, well, part of a housewife or something? And a pouch with a really well used fork, a couple of forks, big spoons, big knife. Uh, one thing to point out if you don't know is the difference in forks. Modern fork, period correct three time fork. That's one thing. You can usually find these at antique stores. They tend to be about $15 a piece, but you can buy reproductions at most sutlers for just a couple of dollars. <clears throat> so there you have an inside scoop into a typical uh, reenactor soldier's haversack. Everything from the absolute uh, period correct uh, to what we actually carry on, on hot days or just to stay happy and healthy. The other thing you could do is if you want to maintain your rations, and I think also gets overlooked a lot, is you would have seasonal food items in your haversack from things that you forage or things that might have been issued to you by the commissary or the quartermaster. Um, you wouldn't want to have um, apples, for example, in February. 
Uh, so you'd be thinking of consciously about the seasons in which you're reenacting and the food that would be re readily available. And of course, stay away from modern foods such as like red delicious apples or something, which didn't exist uh, then. Uh, we're gonna turn you over now to see what's inside an officer's haversack. And uh, over here, you'll have Captain Whitehall taking you through his gear. So I would also on campaign would be carrying a federal issue haversack to carry my food. This would be more of my portable office. Um, in stationary uh, winter quarters, I would have a uh, wooden field desk, probably made out of a uh, hardtack cracker box. But this is a leather officer's haversack with uh, leather padding because there's a functional pocket in here. And then a blue lining. And this was, as I said, my mobile office. So inside, I have such things as my notebook with pencils, which need to be desperately sharpened. Uh, this could be used for writing down notes at officers meetings, uh, writing notes for my runners to deliver to my various squads or platoons deployed out in the field. I have uh, just a rag, wipe sweat out of your eyes or clean various goods have a bandage and this is kind of a pre-stained bandage so I can just pull it out and look wounded when we're out in the field having fun and I have to get shot. I also have a housewife. Um, it's a lot easier to get to in my haversack which is just on my hip than my knapsack that's on my back. So this has everything in it from scissors, spare thread, clothes pins, more buttons and thread. I'm losing everything. And these are really, really nice because these are waterproofed, uh, similar to the haversacks uh, that the Federal Issue ones are. I also have a signal whistle. Uh, I can't yell very far over a lot of gunfire, so this is uh, an attempt to get over it, especially if I'm not near uh, a company bugler. I have my officer's gauntlets, so very fancy dress occasions. These would be worn. But on a hot day like this, that would be absolutely terrible. As for also an officer, appearance is very much a you know the grooming standard. So I have a hard rubber comb uh, from a really awesome place called the Sutler of Fort Scott. They have all sorts of crazy little small items for soldier. Uh, which I also got from them was a uh, pill case. They're usually sealed and they have little peppermint candies in it. Um, this one is actually supposed to be for uh, constipation. They also have ones for uh, venereal diseases and various other cure-all ailments that they have. But in this, I just have Aleve, uh, Tylenol, and a few little pills of Zyrtec just because we're out in the grass and the trees get allergies a lot, uh, start sneezing, kind of ruins the fun of being out in the field at times. But uh, other than that, it's a pretty big bag. It's pretty spacious, fit a lot in it. Uh, this is actually really light for how I normally pack it. I usually have a tobacco, pipe, match safe, uh, field glasses so I can observe the battlefield going on, but for the most part, this is my officer's haversack. Well, thank you, Captain. So you can see that uh, we uh, pride ourselves on making sure, even with our necessary modern requirements, that we try to, on the outside, make sure everything's period correct and issue. Um, and this video is only possible because someone took the time to leave a really good question in the comments section. So be sure, if you have a question or a comment, leave it down below. We'd love to hear from you and you can inspire our next video maybe. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe for uh, continued uh, support of the channel. And if you'd like more information, you can visit us on our website at www.secondusss.com. Thank you and we'll see you next time.